In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of Colin Morikawa one more time. So in the first video, we took a look at his sequencing and his arm shallowing and how those are two aspects of his swing that helps him be such a consistent ball striker with the longer clubs. In this video, we're going to talk about how he controls the face-to-path relationship to match those two characteristics. From a high level, if you're looking to be a consistent ball striker, then there's two things you have to monitor. One is getting consistent control of the path of the club, and then two is getting consistent control of the face-to-path relationship. Consistent control of the path helps you get solid contact, and then consistent control of the face-to-path helps you control the curve. So with the two, you'll get solid and straight or slight draw, slight fade, but you'll get a, a repeatable contact and a repeatable ball flight. One of the big takeaways from this video should be that if you create lag, if you create an impact position with your body where you have a lot of rotation and side bend, similar to what we're seeing Colin demonstrate over here, then the face is going to be, if you compared where it was at setup, the face is going to be more open or pointing more to the right. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later in this video. Uh, But for right now, just know that if you're going to have a body position that looks more like this, then the face has to be rotated more closed at impact. For a lot of golfers, it's easier to do that earlier in the swing rather than trying to wait until the very last second to try to time that up. When it comes to managing the face-to-path relationship, there are two major influences. One is your grip at setup, so how are you holding the club? And then two is the movement of your wrist during the swing. How are you adjusting your, your wrist in that face-to-path relationship? So what did you do at setup and what did you do during the swing? Those are the two influences on the face-to-path relationship. If we look over here on the right, um, this is as close as I could find to a, a face-on camera, which is one of the easiest ways to look at the grip. Um, but I'm going to show you another way on how you can use the down the line to look at the grip. So if we look at the grip here, um, we typically are looking at where the hands are positioned on the club. So where are the V's on the hand, on the hands pointed? So when I'm talking about grip strength, um, here's what I mean. So if I turn my hands more underneath or to the right side of the grip for a right-handed golfer, um, this would be considered more of a strong position. And if I put my hands more on top or more on the left side, this would be considered a weak position. Neutral or average would basically be when the V's are pointing somewhere around here or my hands are uh, just off to the right side of the grip. So if we look at Colin over here, you can see that the right hand is potentially slightly strong but close to neutral and the left hand is in a weaker position or more on top. But I promised I'd show you how to look at it from the down the line. This position here in both the downswing and the backswing is a good way to check the orientation of the club. If I get him into this position at the takeaway, now we can look at where these Vs are pointing compared to the club face angle. The more that they are pointing, so if here's the club face angle, the more that the, the V's are pointing over here, the stronger the grip would be, and the more that the V's are pointing over here, the weaker that the grip would be. So if I demonstrate that, if I put my hands in a very weak position up on top, then when I get this club into this position here, you can see that the V's on the hand would be pointing way out that way. If I put my hands in a stronger position, so kind of like this, and then I bring the club back to that same position, you can see that the V's are pointing way over there. So this is a good reference or checkpoint where you'll usually have a pretty clear camera angle to be able to see the grip orientation. Now I mentioned in the intro that if you are going to create that rotation and side bend, here's where the chest is pointing, right? So when he was at setup, his hands were basically out in front of his chest. You can see that right now the hands or the club is behind his chest. When, If I have a face angle tool on the club, and if I bring the club back along the arc, even, you'll see even if I keep it in kind of a de-lofted position, you'll see that the club is pointing more out to the right. So if 
I'm hitting it when the club is behind me. Basically, if I'm set up, but then I'm making contact with the club back here compared to my body, then the club is going to be pointing way out there. So I'm going to have to twist that club closed the more that I'm creating lag or the more that I'm hitting the ball with the club behind my body. So if we come back over to this uh, down the line, we can see that that left wrist is bowed, that right wrist extended. Both, both of those close the face to path. And then that allows for him to have the shallower movement and more lag. The shallow movement and lag both open the face to path. But by closing the face with the hands, opening the face with the body, when he gets it back to this position, it's quite similar to where it was in the takeaway, where it's in a very good position where all he's going to have to do is um, control low point and allow the club to continue closing from there. Um, because of the weaker grip, you will tend to see him actually keep that left wrist bowed all the way through impact, um, which more golfers uh, tend to lose a little bit of that bowing and actually move more towards extension, um, but because of his weaker grip, and the tremendous um, lag and body position at impact, he has to maintain that longer into the follow through. Um, that does seem to, for golfers who grip with more of a weak left hand, um, Will McKenzie or Joe Durant are a couple guys who come to mind who are really good long iron players. They will also keep that left wrist more bowed uh, longer into the follow through. In fact, from this kind of goofy camera angle over here, on the right, you'll see if we get into this frame here, you can see that that left wrist still has a fair amount of bow um, and the right wrist is pretty flat. But even though the left wrist is bowed and the right wrist is flat, you can see that the club face is pretty much um, matching the swing plane. It isn't um, kind of overly closed. So these are some indicators for how you can figure out how a golfer is controlling that face to path relationship. Um, and ultimately, that will help you understand how to manage the curve and hit the ball flight you want to match your swing. So the moral of the story of these two analysis videos is that it's kind of dangerous to just pick one piece. It's uh, more important to understand how the pieces fit together. You need to create a grip and a club face control system that matches your body pivot. And there are certain body pivots and, and therefore club face uh, conditions that match better the longer clubs, and there are others that match the wedge play or the short irons a, a little bit better. But the better you understand these pieces, the better your roadmap will be for working on your swing. You'll understand why making a certain change might require another change for it to work, or why you might just be one quick little adjustment away from striking the ball really well. So if you're interested in some drills in how I teach this shaft rotation, uh, then click the link in the description below. Um, that'll take you over to golfsmartacademy.com where you can sign up for a free membership um, and we'll go over the move that we call the reverse motorcycle move or learning to twist the shaft. Now, if you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe so that you'll be the first to know about it whenever we create new analysis videos just like this.